one person's friendly banter at work is another person's harassment. So where exactly is the line? I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister based in central London, and I'm the presenter of the Legal Hour on LBC Radio. It boils down to this. You might think that something you say at work is trivial, such as an office joke to a French colleague about a particular nationality being bad losers after a football match, or a moan to another colleague about a female line manager being a bit shrill at meetings. But should anyone overhearing such comments find them offensive, not just the person to whom the comment is directed, but anyone, then your remarks could be construed as unwanted harassment. If the unwanted conduct, the unwanted comments, is linked to a person's protected characteristics, such as race or sex or religion or disability, then under the Equality Act 2010, your comments could well be unlawful harassment. Now, this is something of which employees should be aware because unwanted conduct isn't defined clearly and can include under the Equality Act spoken words, office banter, social media posts, jokes, a single emoji or a WhatsApp message, even facial expressions such as a raised eyebrow. Any of these things could be perceived as unwanted conduct and that perception the perception of the person hearing it is often all that's required to establish that a humiliating or an offensive environment has been created in the workplace. Now, the definition of harassment in the Equality Act 2010 is where someone engages in unwanted conduct related to a protected characteristic which has the purpose of violating that person's dignity or creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for the person on the receiving end. The definition which is in section 26 of the Equality Act 2010 goes on to say that the recipient's perception is relevant when deciding whether something amounts to harassment. To be clear, if someone perceives that your joke about a shrill line manager creates an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for women, then that will satisfy the test for harassment unless they're being unreasonable. In a case called Richmond Pharmacology and Dallywell, a throwaway comment about a colleague being married off in India was found to have created a hostile environment, but the Employment Appeal Tribunal did note an insensitive comment like that didn't automatically violate a person's dignity where it was obvious no offence was intended. An important case is the recent case of Forstatter against CGD Europe. Maya Forstatter was a researcher in international development whose contract was not renewed by her employer after she tweeted about her belief that a person cannot change sex. I discuss the case in a bit more detail here, but in summary, the Equality Act protects certain beliefs. An employment tribunal initially held that Maya Forstatter's belief that biological sex was immutable, was not worthy of respect in a democratic society and therefore not protected under the Equality Act. But on appeal that finding was reversed and Ms Forstatter's belief was held to be a protected belief. Culturally sensitive topics where there are deeply held and conflicting views, such as gender critical beliefs conflicting with trans ally views, or fundamental religious beliefs conflicting with gay and lesbian rights, now proliferate in our society. And both employees and employers may feel, whatever their stance, that they're walking on eggshells. It might seem to an employer that the easiest option is to discipline anyone who says anything offensive and be done with it. But the finding in the Forstatter appeal means this approach won't work. Employers need to carefully review allegations of harassment on the facts before rushing off to discipline or dismiss an employee for manifesting a belief in order to show their response was, was reasonable. At the same time, employers cannot simply leave speech alone and refuse to take steps against something offensive an employee is alleged to have done or said. If they want to escape liability for harassment caused by one of their employees, they'll need to show they took reasonable steps to prevent 
harassment. This statutory defence, as it's known, is also known as the Reasonable Steps Test under the Equality Act. It's a complex area. As an employee, you should be aware that when you say something at work, particularly with respect to banter, jokes, casual throwaway lines, you could be perceived by your employer or an employment tribunal as potentially creating an offensive environment for others. This is especially true when we post content on social media. And in the case of Crisp and Apple Retail, it was explicitly held that employees have no reasonable expectation of privacy where social media is concerned. Whether your opinion's posted online or you say something in conversation, as an employee, you won't always be in a position to protect predict the ways in which others might interpret your opinion, even if it was made in good faith, and even if you had no intention to cause offence. It's not an ideal situation, but it is, for now, the law. I do hope you found this helpful. I've made other videos which you might find useful, such as this one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.